I don't remember Nagato doing the bouncing jutsu in the show, but I'm kind of into it. Nagato is the second DLC for Naruto Shinobi Striker. This brand new range type brings with him some very unique jutsu types never before seen in this game. He's got invisibility and an install that allows you to spam missiles. But how good are his jutsu? Is he a worthy addition to range types in Shinobi Striker? Let's find out. First of all, when you buy Nagato, here are all the unlockables that you get. He brings two outfits, the Akatsuki Founder, which actually comes with two really good buffs for range types by default and looks awesome as well. This is definitely my favorite of the two. The other one is the Young Nagato outfit, which isn't so much my vibe, but still looks decent. If you have a female character though, you'll get the Conan Young outfit instead, but it looks very similar and has the same buffs as well. You'll also get the Nagato hairstyle from when he was younger. It includes a ninja headband, so you can play around with the colors there if you want. He's got a title as usual, the Senior Disciple, and a new lobby action where you get a Mega Man arm and shoot missiles into the sky. Neat! He doesn't bring any new weapons or substitution, but maybe it's worth pointing out that the store actually has a new ninja tool in the scroll rotation, the scientific ninja tool Crimson Star. You'll have to pull for it with scrolls so it's not guaranteed that you'll get it, but if you want to go for it, this is basically a demon wind shuriken for range types with less range than the demon wind shuriken, but if you catch an opponent at the right angle, they can get stuck in it for a while, setting up some very good combo opportunities and I really really like it. Also there's a limited time event where if you play three quick matches, you get the summer float, which behaves exactly as the demon wind shuriken, but it's a pool float and it has some neat water effects. But let's talk about the stuff that matters, let's take a look at his jutsu. First up, Shikusholo. Nagato summons a chameleon and grants the user invisibility, preventing enemies from locking on but also slowing down your own action speed. The invisibility goes away as soon as you attack or receive damage. This isn't really a summoning jutsu like others in the game, the chameleon doesn't stay around and attack, it's just an animation that makes you go invisible. This jutsu can only be used on the ground or on walls, you cannot go invisible mid-air, and if you're close enough to an opponent when summoning, you'll actually hit them away from you, which can be very useful, since any attack will break your invisibility. That said, attacking an invisible target is easier said than done. There's no tracking whatsoever, so you have to manually aim your attacks if you want to hit an invisible enemy. And if there's a second enemy next to the invisible one, the game will automatically track that one instead. So being invisible, while it's not exactly an invulnerable state, it is very, very safe. You can move around, you can dash, you can chakra jump, you can throw your wire kunai, you can do all of that without breaking your invisibility. What you cannot do is throw kunai, attack or use any ninja two of any kind. Even if the ninja two don't attack and they're just a buff, they will break your invisibility. But while you're invisible, you just need to look out for attacks that were meant for a teammate that was behind you or area of effect attacks that might hit you by accident. Because any sort of damage breaks invisibility. Making damage over time jutsu your worst enemy. If you get attacked by something like Amaterasu, you will leave your your invisible states right away upon activating it. Another counter could be the Byakugan. If someone on your team has a Byakugan, you'll be able to see the enemy while they're invisible. You still won't be able to target them, but it's easy to see where they are and get ready to blast them once that invulnerability runs out. Or if you're good enough, you could try manually aiming your jutsu, though we've been relying on lock-on for so long that people aren't suddenly gonna get good at sniping you without it. Even with area attacks, they do need to damage you in order to break invisibility. If it's just a debuff like super heavyweight boulder or insect jam, you will feel the effects of the debuff like being slowed down, but the invisibility will persist. And speaking of getting slowed down, the description says that it slows down your own action speed, but this slowdown is incredibly negligible. I didn't even notice it at first, but there's a very slight movement speed and charge speed slowdown. That said, you can definitely ignore it for the most part. Unlike other jutsu like Subterranean Voyage, you can actually capture points and flags while invisible. It can be an amazing tool to make your opponents paranoid because they never know when you're gonna be around to take their flag. Now once you do, the flag icon is still visible, they know where you are, but once again, without the ability to lock onto you, it can be hard to stop you. And there is one more secret effect to this jutsu that is not in the jutsu description. After summoning the chameleon, if you get attacked, you don't take damage. The chameleon dies and it dies in one hit no matter what it is, but this means that you can actually survive ultimates that are one hit only. And this invisible hit triggers as soon as you summon the chameleon. You could be mid-animation 
even. So you can do it on reaction when your opponent has an ultimate that is only one hit. So it can definitely be a lifesaver. Overall, this jutsu can make you really annoying, especially in flag battle, where if you cap the flag, it's incredibly hard to stop you from traveling half the map. And you can cover the other half with some other jutsu. It can also be a great tool for range types to reposition themselves into a more optimal position. And it's something that we have never seen before in any class type in this game. So it's an amazing addition to Shinobi Striker. Next up, we have Shurado, a jutsu that summons a puppet armor, enabling Shura attack mode for a period of time, replacing your ninja two buttons with fire arrow head and arm cannon. For fighting game players, this jutsu is what we usually call an install. You press it and your loadout changes for a short period of time. So if you want to use this jutsu in combination with any others, you need to fire the other jutsu first, because as soon as you activate this, both jutsu buttons get replaced with missiles. The aura itself doesn't do anything, it doesn't buff you, the activation doesn't have armor or anything like that, but it is instant. So you can go into this mode as soon as it's off cooldown if you so desire, and pretty much nothing can interrupt it during its duration. The two attacks that you get are the following. Arm cannon, which shoots a missile in a straight line. If you're locked onto an opponent, it will shoot straight towards them, but it does not track. It goes in a straight line to the opponent's position at the time that you fire this jutsu. That said, it's a really fast projectile, so for close range or medium range, it can be very hard to dodge. And your other attack button becomes fire arrowhead, where Nagato shoots missiles into the air, which fall down on the target shortly afterwards. Once again, your target can simply move out of the way, but this one has a little bit of tracking, as the location where the missiles fall isn't set immediately when you fire them, but a short time after that. So if the opponent is moving, it will track them for a short time until that circle shows up on the ground. And the range on this is insane. As long as you can lock on to an enemy, this will just fall on the target. And you don't need a direct line of sight, so you can hide behind a wall and spam these rockets for as long as the jutsu lasts. And this is the jutsu that's got some people riled up, saying Nagato just broke the game. There's a very simple solution to this though, just move out of the way. If you keep moving, none of those missiles connect. Still, it's very useful for a surprise attack, especially since you can fire it from a safe and hidden position. Now, these two different attacks also have different properties when it comes to guard breaking and countering other jutsu. Arm Cannon, for instance, is a wonderful counter attack that can destroy water pillars and sand shields just with a single hit. It simply destroys the jutsu, it doesn't go through it like certain other counters, but since it shoots so fast, it's a wonderful counter to these areas denying abilities. The fire arrowhead, on the other hand, doesn't destroy any of these. You definitely need to fire that straight shot. However, arm cannon doesn't counter everything that the game has. Jutsu like Petrification, Subterranean Voyage, Truth Seeker Orb or the Demon Hunter armor cannot be broken by neither versions of these rockets. But what about just holding the block button whenever someone fires these missiles? Is that a solid way to deal with a spam? Absolutely not. The arm cannon actually guard breaks immediately and you know what happens if you get guard broken, you lose your subs for a while, and you're just gonna get barraged with rockets with no means to defend yourself. As for the fire arrowhead, you can actually block them, but they still deal a ton of damage even if you do. So dodging really is the best option to dealing with both of these missiles. You can also run abilities that disable ninjutsu. If you get shot with toad oil, even after you activate the aura, you won't be able to fire any of the missiles. However, abilities that reset the cooldown of ninjutsu do not work. In fact, there's a visual bug right now where it looks like it extends its duration, but it's visual only, the duration is not extended, the jutsu still ends at the same time. I think this jutsu is awesome, but it's not the problem that everyone is crying about. I hit a lot of people with it because they just refuse to move. Once you fight people who can move around a bit better, the rockets will just start missing if you start spamming. Still, being able to engage from a long distance while staying safe is a great way to support your teammates contesting points or the flag. And the straight shot is a great counter tool to the most popular area rejection jutsu, and it deals some very good damage, so from close or mid-range, where it's harder to dodge, it can be an awesome tool for picking up kills. And with that, we made it all the way to the ultimate, summoning Ghetto Statue. Summons a Ghetto Statue that fires a dragon. Targets hit by the dragon fall unconscious, but lowers the user's HP to 1, disabling their ninjutsu and substitution for a while. It's a guaranteed kill, no matter who it hits. But it's got a pretty big downside of leaving you with 1 HP without ninjutsu or subs to escape. And we have tested if this could actually kill anyone with the buff defense type, with all the defense buffs he could get and the outfit that increases their health. And he still went down, no problem. So unless your opponent is inside a karma bubble, they are definitely going down. And if the opponents are close enough to you, they actually get stunned and cannot substitute away, so activating this close to an opponent actually guarantees a kill. Ideally, this is an ultimate that you get multiple kills 
with. It's something that can definitely win you a team battle, but it's also an ultimate that you definitely only want to do if you have a healer ready to bring you back to good health. Otherwise, you have nothing to stop a single kunai from killing you. Plus, it's possible to die during the ultimate activation. You are a range type, you don't have a huge amount of health, and the animation for activating the ultimate is pretty big. So with enough jutsu or something that has damage over time, it's pretty easy to confirm the kill if you were outside the range of the initial activation that stuns you. That said, it is one of the most powerful ultimates in the game for range types. The stun happens almost immediately upon activation, and that's a guaranteed kill at the very least, with more kills to follow if anyone else is standing in front of that dragon. All three jutsu that Nagato brings to the table are both unique and viable, and I haven't been able to say that about a DLC in a long time. There's always one or another that is extremely situational, but in this case, they're all extremely solid. I don't feel like I've ever reviewed such a solid range type DLC ever since Madara. I don't know if any of these jutsu will be meta-defining. Personally, I don't think any of them are broken. They all have counters, they all have downsides, so as far as DLCs go, this is really the best we could ask for. Three new jutsu that are truly unique, there's nothing else like it in the entire game, and all of them very viable. The one thing that is busted about Nagato right now is the fact that it can do an animation cancelling trick when throwing kunai. The man straight up looks like a kunai machine gun, but since this only happens if you select Nagato, the character itself, you probably won't see it much in Quick Match or Ninja World League since you can't do this with your created characters. I do hope this gets fixed though, it's kind of annoying in Hero League. But if you've played Nagato, I'd love to hear what you think of him as well in the comments down below. And as always, thank you very much for watching, my name is Globku and I'll see you next time. Boy!